Welcome to another edition of Resilient Living Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and today is April 18th, and we are going to talk about is cash trash heading towards digital currency? Is that what's really going to happen? Is cash really trash? I think is the biggest one. Let's talk about that. I just got off a podcast with Ken McElroy talking about is the real estate market going to crash? And what is this? This has a lot to do with sustainable living, you guys. Um, Sorry about the light for those of you watching. I could not find a place for my phone where the sun's not, uh, you know, I'm broadcasting this live from my 2023 Sprinter van here. Um, Ken McElroy was saying that over 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. They're in debt. Within two years, they went from savings, saving money, the most money I think a lot of people have, have ever had, this is the talk, to the most debt. So is real estate going to crash? Is the economy going to crash? Is cash trash? Well, a lot of people don't have cash, right? And as this economy starts to take a dip, you know, what do we do when we invest in life, right? We invest when things are what? Low, not high. Right now, everything's high. A lot of people are in debt. A lot of people don't have cash, right? Um, The time for you to get ahead in your life, uh, as last week's show, was maybe to invest in things in sustainability, these are un, these are hidden things that I think a lot of people don't see, especially these content creators and investors. They're into more buying real estate, gold, and things like that. Where I'm more, hey, let's let's do some real estate possibly, but let's uh, let's let's invest in ourselves in sustainability and health and maybe a little bit of fun, right? But how do you do that if cash is turning to trash? What do they mean by that too? So we have another uh, fellow by the name of Robert Kiyosaki who says that savers are losers. Meaning doesn't mean that you're a loser because you're saving money. It means that the the dollar is devaluing, right? Cash is trash, basically. A lot of people. It's a promissory note, right? I think let's we can get into that because at the end of these notes here, I was gonna say what exactly is cash? Uh, I talked about it last week. It's basically an IOU. Um, look it up for yourself. It used to be backed by gold. Nixon took it off in 1971, and now it's just this worthless piece of paper. Uh, is it completely worthless though? Uh, This is what investors call dry powder. So in a time when people are going into debt and they don't have a lot of cash, right? That means a lot of people aren't spending money on things, right? Especially if you're dangerous like us, sustainable living, you know, resilient living people. um, We pretty much have almost everything we need. We don't really need to rely on you for much things except for oil and gas and electricity, even some of those biodiesels and generating with a hydropower or solar panels, you know, to an extent we provide for ourselves. So uh, I want to start off with emergency savings and adjusting accordingly as inflation occurs. So is cash trash in some sense? Yes. If you're just sitting on it, you're doing nothing with it, except for the emergency savings uh, preparedness, as I've talked about this throughout my show Uh, I have another show called Up and In It. We did this in like 2018. I started. I've been talking about this for a long time. Even if times are good, you still want to have some emergency cash flow or not cash flow, but emergency savings. Now, one of the things I completely forgot about in my life as far as uh, adjustment was the adjustments for inflation. As your cash is turning to trash, right? If you have uh, three months is a good number to start off with. Six months, a year. To me, I like having a year supply of emergency funds. But you got to remember and take into consideration as things are moving in this world, um, the, the devaluing of the dollar and things like that. That means uh, as inflation rises, right, it costs, and depending on what you're looking at in inflation, some things like in the metal industry, fabrications and construction has gone up by at least 30, 40, I'd say even up to 50%, right? Food's gone up probably, I'd say 30%, 40, depending on what you're looking at. They're buying four jalapenos for a dollar, you know? It's kind of gone up a little bit, but then you look at a loaf of bread, went from $3 to $6. We talked about that last week. So you want to adjust your emergency savings accordingly. Add more to it if you have it. So is cash trash in a situation where you got to pay rent, um, right? Or you want to start buying things. So I talked about last week about buying a bread maker or anything that you can automate your life, right? Things that will, will make your life better. Having the cash when people fall. And I'm not saying that I want people to fall. I don't say, I think that I want them to, I, I don't think, I know that I don't want them to suffer, but really in these scenarios, you know, I've been beating the drum for like four or five years now, get trying to get the message out and it's just not sexy enough. People don't care. So I look at 
You can't make the horse drink water, but if the horse ain't going to drink water, I'm going to peel the saddle off of it before it goes down and utilize that saddle and the bridle and stuff like that. And, you know, maybe uh, utilize everything that I can, right, without hurting the creature. Just it's going down, doing its thing, and it will not listen. So, hey, why not have some dry powder, as they say, too, if you are looking to invest into a house or land or something to live more sustainable, more resilient, be patient, right? This is the high point. We have there's cyclical things that move, uh, cyclical uh, ups and downs that happen with the markets. What's happened in the world, the expense of goods and services, real estate, you know, all those type of things. They will fluctuate. They always have and always will. That's one thing that is is the uh, dominant. Uh, sustainable thing that you can say about life is that there will be change. <laughs> so yeah, keep up with those emergency savings and adjust them as uh, inflation occurs. And you definitely are going to need something in these hard times. Uh, to tell you guys the stress level that it alleviates to know that, look, if the crap hit the fan, I literally have a year of sitting in my home to figure out what the heck I'm going to do, right? And on top of that, right, once you get your emergency funds, and we have things right now in, in the banking system where we have a lot of troubled banks. There are banks offering up to 5%, I think, even maybe like 4%, uh, which has never happened before, where you put your money in the bank, right, your savings, this emergency funds, it starts accruing 4%. Let's just say, right, guys, you do the math. You have, uh, I don't know, let's say $50,000, $100,000 to make it uh, safe, right? Every month, four five percent of that being added to that, uh, really good deal. Things to look at for instead of just sitting here and drowning in misinformation and the fear mongering and the psychoticness of what is supposed to be our world at this present point. Next, um, how the well, what would happen with the digital currency? How how would the transition actually look? And what I think is that a lot of the whatever the government or uh, the establishments try to introduce to people, they're not really trusting. Look at how many people trust the government or things, you know, especially something like digital currency. Like, hand me all your money. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and I'll give you a bunch of, uh, right, digital promissory notes. I don't think people are going to be very trusting. They're going to have to forcefully do this. They're going to have to make cash inconvenient, which we're already seeing. There are parts in airports and stuff like that where you got you can't use cash. We don't accept cash here. Right. So what they're going to do, my hypothesis, is that they're going to slowly start introducing it, uh, the digital currency, and they have to make things really, really hard. They have to make it to where, oh, my goodness, like, look, my family needs to eat and I got to buy some food like we're hungry. You want to really control people. You control them with food. You take food away just for a day. Take money away from them. Um take their house from them and all that kind of thing, make them hot, make them cold. They're going to get disturbed. But man, when somebody goes without food for a day, especially if you're a, a, a parent and you see your kids suffering of hunger, you'll probably do anything. And not to say that's what the plan is that they're doing, but I think it could be implemented by the high costs and all that kind of stuff. And I'm, basically, I think I'm trying to get myself in trouble so I get kicked off here. <laughs> hey, if I do, guys, get deplatformed on that note. Um, which happens if you guys don't know what that means, it means they can destroy this channel because they don't like what I'm saying. And we're going to talk about control here with digital currency in a minute. So you guys, there's an email, go down in the description below. I'm trying to gather email lists so that if you guys like the content I'm making and they get rid of me, I can pop up somewhere else. So just thought I would say that that probably got me in trouble. Hell, I'm probably deplatformed right now <laughs> before I even publish this. Okay, so yeah, how the tra the transition of digital currency may happen, I don't think anybody knows. Everyone likes to blabber off to get um, uh, subscribers and stuff like that, and I don't think that's quite the way to do it. We need solutions here, people. So uh, before I go into some of the solutions, let's talk about some of the positives and negatives. The positives or negatives, I'm, I'm sorry, let's move the positives, is uh, not being robbed, you know? I... I like to say all the time that I don't support what the government's doing, what the high, the powers that be, but I find it fascinating to watch how they move, right? And things that they make. So, and no matter what, I always look, we're all separated. We're all, the powers that be have us wanting to be like, I'm either right and left, right? You're either with me, you're not, right? Then we have us all separated. We should all be united in my book. But what they have is, uh, 
is people confuse where they look at something, they, just, they don't see the positives. Everything, the right and the left both have great things to say. Um, something I don't agree with all of them, but everybody has like different perspectives. And if we keep an eye on those perspectives, we can learn so much. One of the positives I see, again, I'm not supporting digital currency, but the old lady walking down the street in New York, you know, you see somebody, kid come over, snatch her purse and beat her down and steal her wallet. Why would they steal her wallet if she had no money in it? Right? You see where that's going? I see another one with the fentanyl problem that we have in this world where drugs basically are happening with uh, drug dealers in you know Cuba and Mexico and things like that. What would happen if everybody had to use digital currency to make a purchase? I'm sure people can get crafty, but it'd make it a lot more difficult for, for the monetary value for things to go. So I'm just saying that there are some positives to things like digital currency. Do I want it? No but I can see some of the positives. Always stay looking at the positives. Study the monster, the way it moves, its mechanics, and see how you can apply that to your life without hurting nature, without hurting people, just to understand the, the, the gist of it. So maybe you can turn it around and apply it to your life. Now, the negatives is uh, just what I said there. They're going to watch everything that you're doing. They'll know what you spend your money on, how when you spend it. Maybe they could even shut it off. Some people are saying like, hey, look, you're... You can't use that digital currency here, right? That's not gonna, it's not gonna happen. Uh, we can shut your vehicle off. We can basically sell if you're an alcoholic, uh, if you're a drug user, right? All these type of things. Like your privacy basically to get the crap out of my mouth is completely gone. And let me just say this, uh, a tactic that I did for my business um, was actually, it's, there's a big job I'm actually on right now. For those of you watching, there's like, all of these condo buildings that I'm, uh, I've serviced back in 2007 during the big crash, 2008. And, uh, you know, what I did is I would get on Google earth and there was this little tiny thing you can click on and it literally gave me a contact number. Some of them were the owners of the building. I had a commercial building and it told me the square footage of the building. It told me what year it was built. So, um, I have a number that I can call somebody readily there whether it's the owner or the, the manager or the store itself, I know how much square footage is on the building. I know how much employees that, that are hired at that area. I know what year it was built. So I know that like in the roofing industry, you know, these huge commercial jobs, they only last about 18 to 20 years. So, you know, if something was built in like 1990, right, or 1985, I know that right now, if I looked at that building, that roof's most likely gonna give out. And what is the power of that? that I can call that phone number. I've got a square footage, which I could actually me measure from outer space to know the square footage of the building and say, hey, uh, just calling around to see, we happen to be in the area and saw that your you know, your roof is pretty bad. Um, we do know that your building is built in 1985 and usually these things last about 18 years. Most likely, uh, you know, if I ask them, are you guys experiencing any leaks or anything? Yeah, yeah, actually we are, our roof is getting pretty old. You know, how much would something like that cost? You know, and you could literally give them a price over the phone, get your foot in the door, and head out and you got a lead all for free. So the, when I saw this, I was astounded. There was actually websites too that, uh, that you can uh, invest in that would tell you how many, the people who own the, the building, where they live, how many kids they have, what cars they drive, all, you see the information? So this is powerful, why would they not? So some people, I guess I wanna answer the question is they're not gonna go digital currency. You know, we gotta look at reasons why they would. They can, they can track everything. They can literally take your taxes out of your paycheck as they want. They can adjust things without your consent, anything. They would totally do that. <clears throat> Think about how valuable it would be for Nike or uh, let's say basketball makers where they're like, dude, this guy, this chick or this gal buys Nike. Uh, they're, they're at the, the basketball games all the time. They play basketball. We know everything about them. This is a person that we want to send it, an email or a text to or a pop-up on their phone and incentivize them to purchase our goods. And so let's take it one more time up so I don't exaggerate this point, is back in the old days, because I am old, we would do mail, right? You'd send mail out, uh, door hangers, stuff like that. Your average uh, turnaround was like one, two, maybe three, four percent at most, meaning that if you sent out, you know, a hundred of these things, four people would probably call back at most. But you were kind of just pissing in the wind, shooting off the hip, where you just scatter everything out. This now would take everything and make it home down to where not one single one of those notification, one of those letters or emails or something would go to the wrong person. Very powerful, very profitable. Of course they would do it. All right. So 
that's positive and negatives. The next thing I have is how realistic is uh, living off grid? You know, that's the whole premise really of this whole entire show to be sustainable, resilient. And it's a big question I ask myself almost every single day. Where do I move with all of this if cash is turning into trash, right? And if, uh, if they're heading towards digital currency, they want to monitor everything in my life and I want some privacy, maybe I can go off grid. But how realistic is that? You know, I'll shoot off just a couple ideas I have for you guys. One's very, very, let's get very simple. I'm going to go grow all my food and live away from everything I hear from people. And you know what? I'm not knocking it. I made that little condescending voice, but it just irritates the crap out of me because I'm like, you have no idea what you're talking about. And I'll, I'd like to tell them, do this one experiment. And I've done it multiple times. Very simple. You don't have to go to the country, do nothing. Just go and buy some lettuce and tomatoes. Think about what you can grow, what you have grown. What is your experience in growing things, right? Um, let's say you're even a meat eater. Just eat. Let's say I'm going to raise chickens and tomatoes and cucumbers. Just eat those three things for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a week. Try it for one day and see how you feel, right? And then start to do things, experiments like I did where I had an exorbitant amount of kale that was growing in my garden. So I just started, I didn't even bring lunch with me. I just, just eat as I'm working at my farm, eating kale. My stomach got upset. My mouth was like, I'm done with this. I need a burger. I need a piece of steak. I need some uh, egg, an omelet or something like I, I'm bored of this. I, after day two, three, I was like, dude, I'm done with kale. <laughs> it's a healthy, it's supposed to be a superfood, isn't it? Well, give yourself a whack. Try to eat just the simplest things that you can. Uh, if you're going paleo, do nuts and berries and just try to do it. Uh, and eat the same thing without having your body go crazy, your mind to say, I need more, I deserve more. Listen to the dialogue that comes in your head. So the reason why I think this is significant is that if you are going to go off grid, there's only going to be a certain amount of things that you're able to eat. You're going to have to grow seasonally, meaning you only have iceberg lettuce during um, the, the month of April, right? We don't have tomatoes. Nobody's eaten tomatoes since last year of uh, November, right? It is now heading towards May and the tomatoes aren't ready. So when they do come, you know, let's do it, right? So living off grid, I think, is it is it possible to get the heck out of here? It definitely is, but I think it takes a marriage of both technology and nature, maybe technology and getting off grid. You always need some sort of money. You need gas for your car, uh, unless you buy an electric vehicle and you can charge up through a solar system. But when your solar system dies, where's the money going to be to replace the uh, the batteries? Uh, are you aware that your solar panels drop about uh, 10%, I think, of production value of, of performance within the first year or two? And actually, as time goes, they keep dropping less and less and less until, hey, maybe you decided that you needed a uh, thousand watts of energy, but now two years in, you're only producing 800 watts and now you're not getting enough. You have to buy more panels. See where I'm going with all that? This takes very strategic planning, practice. Uh, and I like what my family said. We did move to South America uh, decades ago to live off the land and do things. And we went from hell, right? They called it living in the city and all the crap and everything to a green hell where everybody just had, we, we just had land and everything, but nobody was happy, right? We had to eat the same things and stuff like that. And there wasn't much social things going on because we all live so far apart from each other. There was so much going on that some people considered it a green hell and that could happen for you as well. So uh, I spoke about next what exactly what is cash and it's promissory note. Is it really trash? And the last thing I want to talk about is assets and liabilities. Is cash an asset? No, it's really it really is not. So the name of the game, which a lot of people don't understand, they think that rich people love money. Rich people don't love money. In fact, they hate money. Banks hate money. Isn't that weird, right? If you know what I'm talking about, you're already nodding your head saying, yeah. As soon as you stick your money inside of a bank, a bank needs to get rid of it, invest it. Otherwise, it's losing value, right? They can take that $100 and actually some, from my limited knowledge, loan it out like up to 10 times. They got bonds and all kinds of things that they do with this. Getting back to rich people, they own assets. So cash is actually a liability. You know, for those of you who don't know, a liability is something that just keeps eating away at you, eroding, you right, your, uh, I don't know, your, your money, right, your time, it starts eroding, whereas an asset is something like that starts bringing you money and starts adding to your life. It's a positive. So rich people want to own real estate, gold, all kinds of assets that pay back. And we look at real estate, for instance, somebody buys a house with cash, right? They own it. 
and they rent it out, it starts cash flowing. They're getting, you know, they went from maybe making a 10% uh, ROI on investment, meaning if you spent, you know, four thousand dollars and your in your payment was two two grand a month, someone's paying eighteen hundred. You're only making two hundred dollars a month on this, but you own a lot of them, right? You're getting some cash flow, but once you own the property. Uh, you start making two thousand dollars a month now, right? It just all goes to you. Uh, wouldn't all go to you? You have property taxes, stuff like that. We don't have time to get in details, but uh, these assets and liabilities and is cash is cash trash. So that the, I explained the way the rich, the, what they do, they own things. The money is just the veil. So I think that people to to lock this all down, you need emergency funds. And I would say at this point in this junction of time to hold your patience to go with dry powder is what a lot of these investors are doing. They're not buying stuff because it's high. They're holding on. They're stacking up a bunch of cash, right? Um, it's, it's cash trash if you bought that that property and ended up selling it, right? You cashed out. You got more cash. You got rid of that and de developed into, or invested that into other things that start cash flowing. It just keeps multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. That's kind of the secret of the game. People like real estate because of taxation and things like that. There's a lot of tax write-offs, right? <coughs> so the name of the game, I think right now for myself is that I'm very interested in making a purchase of real estate, but I don't think it's now is the time. Um, I think that would I wad my cash up and put it under my my uh, bed, right, to start saving up if cash is trash. I personally think, as I said, these are just my this is my hypothesis that this is the time right now for people to start saving, stop spending, start saving, get your emergency funds, get your plan in order uh, as far as investing, start saving some investment money beyond your 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 emergency savings, and get that money ready for the fall. I think there is there's definitely got to be a fall. I would be super amazed if it did not. Get ready to go grocery shop, to go shopping, basically. This is what I call, uh, I was telling my uh, acquaintance the other day, is that's the rich do, that when the economy takes a dip, that's when they go and start just on a shopping spree. It's like Nordstrom, right? Sears or whatever to them. They get to go and like, oh my God, we're going to buy an ice cream shop. We're going to buy five houses. I'm going to buy a new mansion. I'm going to buy a new big screen TV. And, you know, the price of everything goes down. It's just common sense makes, uh, that's the time to buy. But 60% of Americans don't have the money um, you do, you got to have cash to buy those things. So is cash trash. I don't think so guys, not for right now. If a digital currency did come, it's not like it would just come overnight. I think it would go side by side with cash. They would just sooner, like I said, they can't force it on us. A lot of us wouldn't take it. They'll just slowly start to edge it away. And I think if you do have cash though, this is the, probably the last time I would say is, this is a good closing. This may be your last chance to invest to go and make as much money as you can. Invest, whether it's small stuff like we talked about yesterday in sustainability, buy yourself some Moringa trees, buy yourself some farming equipment, some gardening equipment, bread makers, things to, to, to produce for your life instead of becoming a consumer. If you can go beyond that, this is maybe the time to buy that land where you can go huge and maybe go off grid, start practicing it, right? Or do a hybrid like me where you're not quite off grid, like meaning way the heck out in the country, you're just close enough to a city to be able to sell goods and services, right? To keep up, to make your monetary um, necessities happen for your off-grid-ish living situation. But whatever the cases you're doing, you're going to need dry powder. Don't take it from me reading Rainbow. Go listen to p people like uh, George Gammon. Listen to people like, uh, um, what's the guy I just said? Robert Kiyosaki. Uh, he does say cash is trash. They're all going into gold and stuff. But listen to what these people are investing in and how they're doing it. A lot of people are saying, just wait, just, just hold, hold steady and wait till you get to that point. So I think I've blabbered off enough that I can't really say anymore. I got to get to work too, guys. So thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.